Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Health Ministry to meet with representatives of the Jamaica Medical Doctors Association over a contract dispute. More vaccines to arrive to aid in the country's inoculation drive. And later in sports, Jerome Waite to be relieved of Reggae Boy's duty. I'm Vashon Brown and here are the details. Officials from the Ministry of Health are scheduled to meet with representatives of the Jamaica Medical Doctors Association, JMDA, over a contract dispute tomorrow. 143 medical doctors are in limbo as their contracts expire on July 1. There is uncertainty over whether they will be re-employed. Speaking on Power 106 FM's morning agenda, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Health, Dunson Bryan, says the situation is not unusual, but he was challenged over the hiring of Cuban medical personnel in the local public health sector. The nurses, which are predominantly nurses that are, um, you, um, that are acquired uti utilizing this agreement, um, are are for a temporary three-year contract and at the end of which the government of Jamaica has the ability to either renew or not renew. Now, this cooperation has been in place for many, many years with the government of Cuba. Mr. Bryan added that the agreement with the Cuban government is not strange to the Jamaican system, pointing to the benefits of the collaboration. Doctors who come through the Cuban program are specialist doctors. They are cardiologists, they are nephrologists, a lot of the specialist services for which we do not have um, these specialists um, in Jamaica. Jamaica has received an additional 3,000 doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine. The supplies arrived on a flight which landed at the Norman Manley International Airport this morning. The doses were sourced through the Pan American Health Organization, PAHO. An additional 35,000 doses donated by the Mexican government are due in the country by Thursday. Chairman of the National Health Fund, Howard Mitchell, says the COVID-19 vaccine doses should increase in a few weeks. By the end of this week, going into the new month, I would expect that you would have somewhere between 40 to 60,000 doses of vaccine available for distribution. 49 new cases of the virus were confirmed on Sunday from 459 samples. The country's overall case count is now 50,054. The positivity rate now stands at 9.2%. No new deaths were recorded. Therefore, the death toll remains at 1,061. In the meantime, 103 persons are hospitalized with a respiratory illness. Eight are critically ill. There are 18,676 active cases of COVID-19 in Jamaica. Meanwhile, with a spiraling crime situation, the opposition continues to ask, where is the crime plan? O'Shane Masters has been speaking with the opposition spokesman on national security, Peter Bunting. Since 2016, the opposition and other stakeholders have been calling for the government to outline a plan to tackle crime once and for all. But according to opposition spokesman on national security, Peter Bunting, those calls seem to be falling on deaf ears. We've found a certain reluctance um, to even fully share the data on which decisions are being made. And I don't think if you want to encourage a whole of society response, a whole of society support for any crime, flight, crime fighting plan or strategy or policy that you should other than be as open and transparent as possible and welcoming um, input from all the various segments of the society, not just the opposition. He was also again critical of the use of states of emergency as a crime fighting mechanism. There are also concerns that the SOEs are used to detain people indefinitely which a judgment handed down on September 17, 2020 by Justice Bertram Morrison said was unconstitutional. It's a point Mr. Bunting says was expressed by the opposition early on. He also had another issue with the legislation and how it is used. 
What it also does is encourages a sort of laziness in the police force. Instead of building proper cases through good intelligence, good investigations, and mounting strong prosecutions. Um, that is how you sustain in a normal society. That is how you sustain uh, proper policing, uh, making sure that there are convictions for violent offenders that will put them away for a long time, remove them from the communities that they're in. Attorney General Marlene Malahu Ford said that the government is awaiting the transcripts for the court decision regarding the use of states of emergency. She says once that is received, a decision as to the way forward will be made. However, the opposition spokesman on national security believes the government should not challenge the court's decision. Any delay now to go and appeal that is, is, is really a waste of time. Let us put those resources into building our capacity for intelligence gathering, for proper investigations, and for stronger prosecutions. The truth of the matter is that the, the results in terms of violent crime this year, without the state of emergency, are very similar to the previous two years. And in some cases, it is improved. So there is no empirical data to even confirm the efficacy of the state of emergency as a long-term crime-fighting tool. O'Shane Masters, TVJ News. A manhunt is on for four men who shot and injured seven persons in Johns Hall, Montego Bay, St. James on Saturday. It's understood that around 2.40 p.m., men armed with high-powered weapons and handguns opened fire at a group of men at a car wash in Dam Road Square, Four men were injured at the location. An off-duty police officer responded, but it's reported that she was shot by the men. A shootout ensued, but the men escaped. TVJ News understands, however, that the car in which the gunmen were traveling collided with another vehicle. They then opened fire on the occupants of that vehicle, injuring three more persons. The injured persons were taken to hospital. Now investigations are ongoing. Back to the health sector now, where the opposition is this afternoon blasting the government for its handling of the sector. Chief among the issues, the handling of the vaccination against the COVID-19 virus. Former Health Minister Horace Daly was speaking at the Waterford Divisional Conference on Sunday night. Herman Green reports. The Andrew Holness-led government continues to be blamed for what is being termed the poor handling of the crises affecting the country's health sector. Just recently, the health ministry had to cancel its inoculation exercise due to a shortage of the COVID-19 vaccines. But questions are being raised by the opposition. The Ministry of Health must have known the inventory that they had. They must have known how much vaccine they had for the weekend. Because they were the ones calling people and telling people to come for your appointment. And it looks bad on the ministry that I led on two occasions. Something is wrong. He argues that the matter should have been dealt with differently. The former health minister says the technical competence is within the ministry to handle the matter. In the meantime, he's calling for an investigation into the lapse of implementation of a digitizing of records at the University Hospital of the West Indies. I'm saying either the Auditor General or the ministry itself, we need to find out, or the university, there are good people there, why this contract has been languishing so long and the people of the university hospital cannot reap the benefit. He has, however, used the challenges in the health sector to bash members of the media, who he says are against the People's National Party. If the People's National Party was in power and these things happen, every day they would have been on the radio every week and civil society or some voices who you never hear before all both of your people are talking about incompetence and government and this and minister for this and minister for that i know the minister felt very well i know his competence but i'm telling you the leadership in the ministry need to take stock herman green tvj news Four homes were destroyed by fire on Factory Road in St. Thomas last evening. As Sandy Williams reports, the residents are blaming the Yalas Fire Station for their loss. 
This is what's left of the structure, which contained four homes. About 7 o'clock, fire gutted the building, destroying the contents. It's not clear how it started. The residents say they saw the blaze coming from a section of the apartment and alerted the Yalas Fire Station, which according to them is about 300 feet away. However, the people claim they were told no truck was available. Therefore, a team from the Marant Bay Station responded. But by the time they arrived at the location, everything was already up in flames, except a line of clothes in the yard. The residents are blaming the Yalas Fire Station for their loss. A force burned down now, and they build fire station and now buy truck. You understand? They need, they, they need to step up their game. They now throw no weight. The truck of here come from Mark Baker out for your Yalas. And Yalas a big, big fire station with no truck. You understand? Then if you step up in the game, man, they not show no weight, man. They want chuck. And more than one chuck, 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 chuck. Then we get two units, and they take out the two units from it. Then bring a whole one cookie with The whole one broke down. <laughs> they have to mark here. Right now, this one has to come from Mark Baker out the house. Oh, gosh, man. The total value of the damage is unknown. Sandy Williams, TVJ News. And it's now time for a break, but please stay with us. More stories when we return.